Hello and welcome to High Caliber TV, your source for figure and model updates every Wednesday and Friday. Today on the workbench, I'm going to be showing off a bit of my work in progress on these Alpine here tank crew. So as you can see, the jacket's done, trousers have been done since last time of course, and I just removed the two layer of mask on the trousers, so it was a layer of blue tack up around the the hem there and on his arm and the rest was just standard masking tape. So as you can see there's actually still a little bit of blue tech that is doggedly hanging on for dear life and I'm desperately trying to get rid of it with the back of an exacto knife and little brushes with uh, that are a little stiff and have flat heads. I find brushes just stiff ones are really fantastic for removing blue tack because you're far less likely to damage the the beautiful paintwork you've just applied and spend all that time masking off because what I've found is that a lot of times when you thin things down with isopropyl and then you spray them they're so thin and so delicate that just rubbing it with your finger can actually remove parts of it. So here you can see the jacket's finished. Not too sure how happy I am with it. There's a few layers you can see. Some dimensions that I applied. Looks alright. I used the same technique that I explained on the trousers. So I sprayed the highlights and then went back with the dark colors and worked them up. And then I messed up a little bit and I had to go back with the neutral color just directly on and then go down with a few extra highlights to clean them up. So what's next is the belt and holster, but I'm going to wait until his mate is finished to start on that. And this is the progress on the mate. So that counter shading is almost invisible at this point. Uh, unfortunately, far more subtle than I anticipated. I think I'm probably going to have to go back over this guy with some black cut down with olive drab or burnt umber or something like that because when I look at the the reference on the box he's actually black like his uniform is a semi-gloss color and it's a very deep deep dark color so I'm gonna have to go back over him and then possibly use this color I've got now as the basis for the highlights and then use like a, a thin down ghost gray kind of color for the highlights and try to avoid anything approaching white or off-white or anything like that because it wouldn't actually become it wouldn't reach a crescendo of highlights that would be that high yeah uh, gray I'm finding getting a pleasing effect out of a gray quite difficult so I'm learning lots on this build back in a minute and we're back so here's the base it's complete except for the sides that need to be touched up and once it gets a ceiling coat of clear flat I'm gonna apply patches of grass around. You don't apply the patches of grass before you spray it with clear because when you spray patches of grass with clear they turn white which ruins the effect obviously. So yeah pretty happy with the way it turned out. It was a basic three stage process once the initial spray painting had been applied. I dry brushed the areas to give them the color differentiation, the main color differentiation between the dried river and the roadway, and then applied a multitude of pigments and filters just in haphazard but very controlled ways. So what I mean by that is in between the raised sections of the riverbed I applied the darkest pastels and the same way here on the little rise I applied them in a sort of a nasty dirty way because that's the, so the side of the roadway that would have a lot of dust accumulated in it but on the roadway I applied them in straight lines going that way to simulate people walking. And then finally, once that was all done, I applied a simple oil wash with the usual stuff. It was just burnt umber. And as you can see, 
I made footprints by just patting a brush on there with the oil and it seeps in really well. And then once that had cured for 15 minutes, I did the usual thing with mineral spirits and I streaked it to blend it in so that it didn't look like brush strokes. It just looked like random splotches on the roadway. So obviously this looks like a road that's been walked over a lot. It's not a morass, so you know, an entire division hasn't walked on this one road, but it's being walked over by like a company of people. And obviously the two guys are just standing, planning the next move. Pretty happy with the way it turned out. So here's the officer. It's pretty hard to tell how he looks through the camera because of how subtle the highlights and the shadows are with the gray. Uh, as I said earlier, I've been finding it difficult to get a really pleasing effect out of the grays, but I think he turned out the way that he's at least supposed to in my mind. He doesn't look like a single blotch of color. He doesn't look like he's wearing a black tunic or a black uniform. It's just, it's a really, really dark gray. So for that, I took the usual colors, the initial colors that I was going to use which were a couple of grays based on Vallejo Model Air Extra Dark Sea Gray. That was the primary color and then I added uh, shade lighter to create the highlights and then black for the recesses and then to top it all off because once I applied all that he looked bland. I mean he's gonna look gray anyway but he looked wrong. It just didn't look right. So what I did was I took I took this and this stuff's really interesting. It's super, super thin, so it's really fragile when you apply it. But I took this and really, it's already really thin because it's made to be fired out of an airbrush right away. But I thinned it down with isopropyl alcohol so that it was almost translucent. And then I applied it going up for the shadows. And I applied it over almost every surface, which toned down the gray and made it pretty much the way it is now yeah and I also wanted to show off the basic details that are coming along as you can see there's some edge highlighting going on basic details these are obviously about 50% of the way through they're a bit stark still I haven't applied any washes and I haven't finished with the highlighting process yet I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update he's still missing all of his rank all of his identifying badges boots still aren't done flesh obviously isn't finished yet but so far so good, they're coming along at quite a pace. And I wanted to show you one last thing before we end the video for this week. So here is this guy. Now the pictures I've been posting were a bit premature. I said in the picture that was on Facebook and on Pinterest that his jacket had been finished. Uh, I was wrong. I took the same black technique that I used on the officer and applied it to his jacket because as I was looking at the, the box art, his jacket's actually black, like a death's head uniform. So I wanted it to look less gray. So I did the same thing, spraying the super thin Medea black opaque at an upward angle. It left the highlights there a little bit, as you can see on the shoulders. He still looks pretty good. Uh, I'm not too sure how happy I am with these processes. It's it's subtle, but almost too subtle for this scale. So we'll see how the finished product looks. I might have to rethink my process though. Thanks very much for watching. If you're looking for these figures and many, many more like them, 135th scale resin stuff, be sure to check us out at highcaliberminiatures.com. I'm gonna put the link in the description as always. Follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. Mainly Facebook and Pinterest because I post a lot of work in progress shots there and a lot of stock updates on those things and so the links for those are in the description as well so just click on them and yeah thanks very much for watching oh and i want to thank everyone who's been subscribing i never went into this gig expecting much out of the youtube scene but so far it's coming along pretty well and yeah i just really appreciate it thanks very much